sound speeds. And I'm still in the location, so sorry about the whiskers, but that's probably not bothering you nearly as much as me using the camera mic. But the reason I'm doing that is because I'm in a very noisy environment. Just to give you an idea, my hotel room sounds like this. We have an air conditioner that does not shut off. The main air conditioner for the entire building is right there, and yes, I can kill the thermostat, which is what I did. But I'm not going to do any post-processing in this video because we're going to be testing a bunch of different microphones that are different kinds of microphones, and we're going to see which one can actually reject out all this background noise most effectively. As I'm sure you've noticed, I'm currently wearing an over-ear headset. This is a Sennheiser ME3EW, and it's kind of simulating what a gamer-style headset would sound like if you were wearing it. Now, obviously, it would only record in the Tascam DR40 via something like a Rode VXLR Plus, which is what I'm currently using. It screws in there and it plugs directly in. Now, sometimes that can create a little bit of noise in a cheaper recorder like this one, but we're going to have to deal with that for this recording. What we're listening for is the background noise. So let me go quiet for a second. Is it noisier or less noisy than the camera mic? Well, the microphone is obviously closer to my mouth, and it's probably getting a whole bunch of plosives just nailing you in the face. But if I back the microphone off, you may not hear as many plosives, but my voice is going to sound a lot farther away real quickly, and it's going to be diving into the noise floor. So you kind of want to find a good place where it will be close to your mouth and maybe not nailing it with plosives. I don't honestly know where a good place on this headset is. I don't use these kind of things. But this is our first sample, and this is kind of simulating what a gamer-style headset might sound like if it doesn't have overly good wind protection. Going forward, I am going to be monitoring the audio I'm recording using my trusty old Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones. You can watch my review of this product right there. But currently, you are listening to the Deity VLOV, and it is going into the Tascam DR40 using the DXLR, also by Deity. You can find links to these products, by the way, down in the description if you're interested in any of them. But for right now, I'm going to go quiet and let you hear it. The noise in this room really annoys me. Now, the VLOV, I thought, has a pretty natural sound, especially if you're in any kind of a good environment or recording exteriors. How is it sounding off the, ref off the walls? I mean, the reflections are all over this room, and you can't really make this room sound very good, which is the whole purpose of this video. How is the VLOV holding up, though, in comparison to the ME3EW Sennheisers? Well, think about it. Listen, and tell me in the comments. In case you're curious, no, the audio on this channel is usually quite a bit better than what you are currently hearing, but I'm recording in a very bad environment for a few episodes, and this is just because I usually record in the middle of the night. And I do apologize for that, but it gives you a good idea of how these microphones sound in a no noisy environment. And that is the whole purpose of this video. So in this case, you could say I'm embracing the badness and making something good out of it. Now, you have currently been listening to the Deity VMic D3 Pro. I reviewed the VMic D3, and this particular model is a little bit more expensive. It has a longer interference tube. It, has, uh, uh, it uses an internal battery. It has 20 dB of stepless gain that you can simply adjust right here on the back. And it has two different roll-offs, a 150 hertz and a 75 hertz roll off it is currently in zero decibels of gain mode it is disabled as uh, you know with regards to roll off and you're listening to it approximately uh, about three or four inches off my mouth i want to be consistent about the audio basically because we are doing a test of background noises and i want to stay consistent i think that's going to give us the very best results obviously with something like the vlov is designed to be right here and obviously with regards to the headset it could be a little bit closer because that's just the nature of where those are used but if you were using something like this microphone for voiceover in something like this right in front of you trying to record in this kind of a noisy environment, this gives you a great idea of how it sounds. Let me go quiet and give you a really good idea of how it sounds with the background noise. Now, also so it's been said, the noisiest place in this room is right up in that direction. I was about to point, but then I was realizing it was going to go off camera. That is where there's this big, huge, annoying vent that I cannot shut off. 
I'm sorry, it's a hotel room and it is very noisy. If you're wondering why I decided not to shave while I'm out here on location, it's because I figured I might as well change my look while I'm changing my background. But who cares about that? Let's get into this microphone. We're currently listening to the Samson CO1 large diaphragm condenser. Now I'm using this microphone instead of using something more like a pencil condenser microphone, because in all honesty, as long as you're about the same distance off of the microphone, which is only about three or so inches currently off of my mouth, it's going to sound relatively the same, no matter what condenser you have with regarding to background noise. Now I do want to point out that again, this microphone is facing directly the noise source that is the biggest offender in this room. But if I go quiet, this is how the background noise sounds versus the other microphones that we've been listening to. And in case you're curious, yes, I'm going to be level matching all the microphone comparisons in this video to negative 24 LKFS. You may be asking, why am I using fairly inexpensive microphones in this comparison video? Well, two different reasons. Number one is it's fairly easy for you to get your hands on something if it's under about $100. The other reason is if I start playing a price matching game, then if I use something like the Neumann U87 AI, about a $3,000 plus microphone, then what lav mic could I compare that to? What dynamic microphone could I compare that to? Compare that to? How about over ear headsets? I mean, there's nothing else that's going to really match it. So if I start getting into the really expensive top of the line models, then how are they going to really compare to each other? So in this video, we're going to be using stuff like this dynamic microphone, the SE Electronics V7X. Now I'm not currently using it with something like the DM1 Dynamite SE Electronics, which is a, this is actually a microphone inline preamplifier. And the reason why is because I want you to sound, hear what it sounds like coming directly out of the microphone. Now, dynamic microphones are typically more noisy if you use it on a microphone preamp that's not as good a quality like the one I'm currently using on the DR40. So I'm going to throw this on there as a comparison in a moment, but for right now, let me go quiet and give you an idea of what this microphone sounds like on this preamp in this environment. The background hiss that you're hearing is actually from the microphone. And if I put the DM1 on there, then you're probably not going to hear it anymore. Let's try it. Now I'm using the same microphone, the SE Electronics V7X, but I'm going into the DM1 inline amplifier, which adds about 28 dB of gain. From there, I had to turn the gain way down on my Tascam DR40 to prevent a lot of clipping. Now I'm going to go quiet and let you hear the noise floor now. So it's fairly quiet in regards to hiss, but how do you think about the background noise? I mean, is it getting lower or is it getting higher when we go into different types of microphones? I also want to apologize because I'm hand holding most of these microphones. And while that isn't normally an issue because you don't hear handling noise, I have heard it a little bit during my tests here. And I do want to, again, apologize for that. I'm going to try to avoid this kind of thing going forward as I have in the past. Now, I didn't want to put it in shock mounts for the simple reason that some of the microphones don't go in shock mounts, like the over-ear headsets and like the lavalier microphone. But this particular microphone, I could. And this microphone, in case you're curious, is the T-Bone EM9600. It is a shotgun microphone, and you could put a battery inside of it if you would like. Now, I do want to point out that this microphone does have two different patterns on it. It has a cardioid and a super cardioid pattern pattern along with an off switch, but I'm using the cardioid mode for this video. And let me go quiet so you can listen to the background noise. There you go. A short shotgun microphone like the EM9600 should give you pretty good results this close to my mouth, but then what do you think? Is it better or worse than some of the others we've heard so far? 
The previous microphone you were listening to is a short shotgun microphone, but it looked long because it had a place inside of it where you could put a AA battery in order to create 48 volt phantom power. But I was just using it in phantom power mode, just like I am this microphone, its big brother, the EM9900, also by T-Bone. Now, this is a long shotgun microphone. As you can see, it's not even staying hardly on the screen itself. And if I were to point this microphone in a different direction, you would definitely be able to hear how it rejects out the background noise that's coming almost directly down the interference tube in line with it now. But I'm going to go quiet and let you listen to it right now. Of course, there's an airplane flying overhead at this exact moment. But also, in case you're curious, a long shotgun microphone rejects out background noise even better. Like, if I point this away from this particular noise source, listen. So you may be asking, why am I not pointing this microphone away from the noise source? Consistency. But then the VLOV and the headset were just pointed right at my mouth, right? Yes but all the other microphones have been in the exact same direction. And I feel this is pretty consistent because the over-ear headset and the lav microphone are omnidirectional, while these are more directional and cardioid pattern microphones. I hope you found this video informative. You might not have access to or even be aware of all these different kinds of microphones, nor would you be aware that they have different sounds to them. But that's the reason why I did this video. I want you to hear the different audio samples and to get an idea of how they sound in a real world environment like this noisy room with terrible reflections. And I want your opinions down the comments below which one sounded best in overall fidelity with regards to background noise overall which one would you choose based on the test that i did and this right now is the last test this is directly going into the dual microphones on the tascam dr40 i'm speaking directly into them only about three inches off my mouth just like i have in all the other videos but i want you to tell me in the comments below which one you thought sounded best and if you need to, flip around and listen to all the different samples. I'm going to put some timestamps down below for you to quickly jump wherever you'd like to go in this video and listen to the different samples. So now that I have headphone here, woohoo! I have gone back to using the microphone that's built onto the camera, which is only about two and a half feet away from me. And in case you're curious, the camera is the Panasonic Lumix G7. Now, I want you to tell me in the comments below which style of microphone, based on this test, you thought probably performed the best. Not only in overall fidelity, but in background noise, because you want to be able to reject out all of these noises if you're going to do any kind of recording. Obviously, you should not ever use the on-camera microphone or a webcam in any kind of environment such as this. But I want your thoughts and your opinions and your feedback, I should say, down in the comments onto which microphone style you would choose. Maybe not the microphone that I used, but the style of microphone would be appreciated. Tell me what you think. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for watching this video and be sure to tune in for more episodes of Sound Speeds where I'm going to hopefully have better sound by the time you listen to it next time and give you more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.